Hi guys, I'm Tyler. I'm here at the Range Master 2013 Tactical Conference here with John Farnham. John, thanks for being here. You bet. We really appreciate you doing this video with us. And um, could you give uh, the viewers just a real quick brief background on yourself? Well, I'm, I'm John Farnham. I'm a, uh, a deputy sheriff with uh, Park County in Colorado, uh, entering my 41st year of law enforcement. And uh, most of my time these days is spent uh, traveling around the world teaching uh, the art and science of defensive shooting and uh, that's what I spend most of my time doing. <laughs> okay, awesome. And uh, one of the important topics that you covered in your lecture yesterday and the one last year was tape loops. Yes. Now a lot of people don't know what these are. Could you give us the definition of what a tape loop is? I think uh, my colleague uh, John Holshan was the first one who used this term and I of course uh, plagiarized it immediately. Uh, a, a tape loop is just a short uh, a uh, collection of words you can use uh, in a stressful circumstance that you can practice ahead of time. Uh, the idea is you can communicate an idea clearly without trying to make it up as you go along. Uh, that is, uh, you, you've got the tape loop ready to go, you've practiced it before, you can uh, enunciate it uh, and be understood by both uh, uh, suspects and witnesses alike. Uh, rather than trying to, uh, as they say, uh, make it up as you go along and have it come out garbled or not be understood or not say what you planned on saying or let slip something you didn't want to say, like a racial epithet or something like that that uh, we don't recommend having as part of your vocabulary, but right. you don't want that stuff to slip out. It, uh, it uh, in most cases, is not going to be helpful. Right, and it's, it's really important to practice these because, like you said, under stress you can be slurring your words or... Indeed. Uh, in our courses, uh, the way I sometimes put it is that uh, there's more to uh, making breakfast than just learning how to run a waffle iron. Uh, running a waffle iron, of course, is an important part of making breakfast, but there, there's more to, to getting breakfast made and served than just operating a waffle iron. And everybody wants to come to these courses and shoot guns, and of course we shoot guns. But there's other things. There's interaction with the criminal justice system. There is interaction with potential suspects. Uh, and tape loops are part of that, and they have to be practiced just as we practice shooting, just as we practice all other psychomotor skills. This has to be practiced and then integrated into uh, our entire uh, repertoire. Exactly. And the one that, one of my favorite ones, the one that you taught us last year, was, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot help sure. you. Because no matter what they ask you, that's a, a, a viable response that will work in that situation. Uh, you know, and our general uh, doctrine is that uh, when we have a unsolicited contact with someone, someone approaches us or something like that, that I don't know or ask me a question that, I'm, uh, that I hadn't not prepared for, uh, the assumption is they're up to no good and uh, our best interest is normally served by quickly disengaging, disengaging and separating. Uh, our general, generally our best interest is not served by becoming involved in a conversation. Uh, so. Uh, what we're going to do in most cases is politely dismiss them. I'm going to say in so many words, you're dismissed. I have no interest in any conversation with you. Well, instead of putting it that way, uh, the tape loop is, I'm sorry, sir, I can't help you. Uh, no matter what the, the uh, initiation was, I'm lost, I need five bucks, uh, I lost my wallet, uh, uh, you can think of a thousand things that uh, come ons people use. The answer is always the same, I'm sorry sir, I can't help you, as you uh, separate and disengage. Right, so uh, dismiss being the key word. Yes, uh, however, uh, when you don't practice something like that, it comes out, uh, you, uh, uh, you sound confused yeah. and, uh, and uh, disorganized, and that confusion uh, becomes evident to everyone, and it actually stimulates uh, prey behavior. Uh, the prey behavior on the part of the predator is stimulated by, by people who think he thinks are confused right. and unable to make a decision. Uh, so when it comes right out, I'm sorry, sir, I can't help you. Uh, uh, hopefully through his mind goes, uh-oh, this guy's done this before, I better go pick on somebody else. Exactly, and it's a lot different when you're dealing with law enforcement. Um, so I guess the question is, what should the first thing be out of a person's mouth when the police get there after, say, a defensive shooting? Well, uh, if, when you've been involved in a, uh, a shooting, uh, uh, the police are going to arrive one way or another, and we, the, the first thing we say, we greet 
police, uniformed police, uh, with this posture. We put your, your hands, make sure they can see the front of your hands. Uh, and uh, uh, you're gonna say, the first thing I recommend saying is something like, officers, thank God you're here. I'm the one who called. Uh, again, burglars don't say that uh, normally, and, uh, and that, that is a good tape loop to introduce yourself. Instead of saying something like, I'm the good guy, because the police are going to say, you know, they all say that. That's not very helpful. Uh, uh, or come out with something garbled, like that. Uh, uh, you're not communi communicating anything worthwhile. Uh, officers, thank God you're here. I'm the one who called. Uh, sets the stage. It, it identifies you in the constellation of this circumstance and gives officers some genuinely useful information. Uh, and uh, makes it a lot less likely you're going to be shot by a police officer. Right. And then after that, what would you say, and more, more importantly, where do you suggest we stop talking? I suggest, uh, I don't suggest non-cooperation. I suggest smart cooperation. Uh, I warn my students that uh, uh, becoming too verbal, the, the more you say, the more likely it is you'll say something incriminating, even though it sounds innocent to you. Uh, so. Uh, after identifying yourself as the one who called, I usually uh, uh, advise students to uh, identify uh, attackers or perpetrators with something like uh, uh, those people use the word attack, uh, uh, murder, uh, in fear for my life. Uh, those men over there, they attacked us, uh, they attempted to murder us. Uh, don't say kill, say murder. Uh, Fox News can't tell the difference between kill and murder, but we know the difference. Uh, uh, they attempted to murder us. Uh, I was in fear for my life. You don't have to have any more details uh, than that. Well, how were you in fear for my life? All those questions will be answered later. Uh, right now, uh, they attacked us, they tried to murder us. I was in fear for my life. Uh, and then finally, you're going to say something like this. Officers, I'll be happy to answer all your questions as soon as my lawyer is here. Uh, use the word lawyer or attorney. Uh, you, uh, uh, you have to inform the officers politely but firmly uh, that you don't want any conversation with them before your attorney is there. Now as a practical matter, your attorney probably isn't going to show up unless he lives next door. Uh, but when you invoke uh, your right to an attorney, we have to stop asking questions. Uh, when you have entered suspect status, you become a suspect, and of course if a shooting is involved and you did some shooting, you're a suspect. Uh, uh, we have to stop asking questions uh, when you ask for your attorney. And so uh, we have to politely but firmly insist on your rights. Uh, once again, it's not that uh, uh, we're never going to talk to the police, but we're not going to get into great detail right now because your emotional state is such that there's a good chance you're going to say something incriminating. And as police, uh, when you say something incriminating, I can't pretend I didn't hear it. Right. We are objective and unbiased investigators. Uh, if you want to talk yourself into a conviction, we're just going to write it down. And the only thing the court will ever hear, hear is the version I wrote down. Okay, and plus the uh, police probably is probably being recorded also, and uh, in as much as you're not going to remember what you said, uh, get those tape loops down, uh, because uh, when you're on center stage like this, I can't help you. Even if I'm sympathetic toward you and your position, I can't provide you with legal advice. Right. If I do, I should be fired. So the point being, figure out what fits your situation, and just as importantly, to practice them. Practice. Like when you get to the range, practice these tape loops. Right. Uh, do role-playing drills uh, where you practice these tape loops so there's some chance you're actually going to do this uh, when it really matters. Uh, when you have not practiced, uh, good chance you're going to fumble, bumble, and say something incriminating and really make a mess of things. Right. I think that was very imp informative. And it, did you have anything else that you'd like to add to that? Well, uh, you know, we, uh, there, uh, we all know what's happening right now. We're having a, a whole new layer uh, involving millions of people of gun owners. Uh, people are buying guns and ammunition as fast, as fast, as fast as faster than it can be made. Uh, 
And uh, what concerns me is uh, I don't want to see a whole rash of accidents and I don't want to see a whole rash of untrained people doing stupid things with guns. Uh, America doesn't need more idiots with guns. We have plenty of those. Uh, what we need is uh, good people armed and trained. Uh, I trust I don't have to tell you how to be a good person. I trust you know how to do that already. Uh, now we have to apply that specifically to this art and this discipline. Uh, how do I run this gun? How do I, as I said earlier, how do I make breakfast? Uh, not just how do I run a waffle iron. Uh, how do I get all the skills I'm going to need uh, when I use this gun or, or uh, come close to use this gun for serious purposes? And uh, that's what we do at uh, DTI, but there are many other wonderful instructors, and they can all provide, uh, provide you good advice. So if you're one of our new gun owners out there, uh, your job has just begun. You need to get training. Uh, you need to know what to do. Right. And if people are interested in training with you, how can they? Do you have a website? Or? Yes, I have a website. It's defense-training.com, defense-training.com. You come to the website, uh, get a hold of me directly, and uh, we'll get you in a course. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for being here. And remember, your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends, in the words of James Yeager. <laughs>